OK, what I want to do is to tell you a, a story. It's a, a story of a research project that my colleagues in Western Australia and I have undertaken in recent years. And it's a study of farm performance and productivity performance. And it's a study that has tried to unpick what lies behind productivity performance. We've heard a lot of speakers today stress the importance of productivity enhancement or productivity growth. The difficult question to answer is how do you deliver productivity growth? What sits behind productivity? So what I'm going to try and, and explain to you is the, the findings of this research. So we've looked at productivity. Now, traditionally, most scholars analyse farm productivity by looking at data from annual farm surveys. They aggregate all the inputs used by those businesses and they aggregate the outputs. They rarely collect environmental information about those farm businesses and even more rarely do they collect detailed information about the socio-managerial characteristics of those businesses. In, in our study, what we did was we looked at the same group of 270 farm businesses and we tracked them over a decade. So we followed this same group of farm businesses in Western Australia. So these were farms from low rainfall environments down to high rainfall animal dominance. So we were looking at crop dominant businesses in low rainfall environments all the way through to sheep and beef businesses in high rainfall environments. And we measured the performance of these farms each year and we tracked their productivity performance each year over the decade. And we collected a lot of information about the socio-managerial characteristics of those businesses, their use of a whole raft of innovations over that decade, and the sorts of training that was undertaken by members of those farm businesses. And what did we find? Well, what we did find was the, the productivity growth of crop farms was treble that for sheep farms. So the enterprise characteristics of the farm business did affect their productivity performance. And most of the livestock farms were sheep dominant rather than cattle dominant businesses. The other finding, if I can move it on. Oh, too far, go back. The other finding was that farm businesses that were growing had double the productivity growth of farm businesses that were less secure. Now, I'll give you a bit of background on what constituted a growing business. A growing business was one that generated farm business profit in seven out of the 10 years. So to generate a positive farm business, that meant that your cash operating surplus minus costs of depreciation, minus finance costs associated with servicing debt, and minus the personal costs with running that farm family, that business profit in seven out of the 10 years was positive. And the equity of those businesses at the end of the decade was greater than the equity at the start. That was the definition of a growing farm. By contrast, a less secure farm eroded their equity and that they rarely generated positive farm business profit. So in many years, even though those farm businesses may have generated a positive cash operating surplus, a, a bit like Queensland farms in recent years, by the time you took off costs of depreciation, costs of financing, operator's allowance, then those farms were generating losses. So for the farm businesses that grew over the decade, their productivity growth 
was double that for secure farms. Okay. Then what else did we find? Every dot on this chart is a farm. On the vertical axis is the volatility of their productivity performance over that decade, and on the horizontal axis is the average growth in productivity over that decade. And what you find is that there is a positive relationship between growth in productivity and volatility of productivity. So those businesses that achieved high rates of growth in their productivity tended to be businesses that also experienced marked volatility in that productivity. And one of the questions we were interested to ask was, what were the characteristics of the farm businesses in these two categories or quadrants of productivity performance? So in the yellow box, you're looking at farms that displayed high growth in productivity, but high volatility in that productivity. The blue box describes farm businesses that experience low levels of growth in productivity, but low volatility in that productivity. And about two thirds of all the farms in that sample fell in either of those boxes. And what did we find? Well, we found that the farms that were in that high growth in productivity, but high volatility, were in a statistical sense, significantly different from farms that displayed low growth and low volatility. As you might expect, based on that previous chart that looked at the productivity performance of growing versus less secure farms, the farms were more profitable if they were in the high productivity growth quadrant. Also, they were more lucrative in terms of their return on investment. They tended to be larger in size. Interestingly, those farms that displayed the highest rates of growth in productivity and greatest volatility received less growing season rainfall. They were more crop dominant. They were able to generate more crop yield per 100 mils of growing season rainfall. So they were very skilled at converting rain into yield, but they were also able to do the same for livestock. They generated more livestock income per millimetre of growing season rainfall. They were mostly crop specialist and mixed enterprise farms. The farms that displayed the lesser productivity tended to be mixed enterprise farms and livestock farms. The high productivity farms were less, explo less exposed to debt and, as the previous chart showed, they're more likely to be a growing farm and less likely to be a secure farm. Now I want to change tack and try and get behind some of those productivity characteristics. We know that there were some important differences between the highly productive farm businesses and those that displayed low productivity growth. If you look at the literature, one of the ways of trying to get behind productivity is to say, well, farm performance is linked to farmers' use of innovation. Innovation might be influenced by the farm businesses' human capital and the farmer's ability to assess the merits of different innovations and either wisely adopt them or reject them. And the farm's human capital, in turn, might be influenced by the degree of training. Now, that's a pretty simple causal model. When you look at the data, the reality is a bit different. It is highly complicated. And so when we've looked at all the farm data on training, the farm families, farming experience, the availability of family labour, who is actually on the farm, 
and for how long, when you look at what innovations they've used, and when they've used those innovations, look at the managerial behaviour and business outcomes, you get a very complicated model. Now, I don't have time to explain this model. What I'm just going to give you are the results of modelling. And what are the key findings when we've tried to look at the causality that sits behind farm performance? And what we find is that training importantly, yet indirectly, does affect farm performance. So this is training that's provided by government, by private firms. So this is something as simple as attendance at field days, doing chemical management courses, through to people taking on farm management training, longer courses. And the statistically significant findings are as follows. There's no surprise in this first finding that what seems to most determine your farm productivity and farm performance is actually where you farm, especially the seasonal sequences that you've experienced. So there's no surprise there. Your farming environment, your farming history, whether you like it or not, crucially affects your farm performance, be it productivity or profitability. A statistically significant finding for this group of WA Broadacre farms is the use of cropping innovations greatly affects farm profitability and productivity. So there's a suite of cropping innovations that if farm businesses have adopted them and used them over that decade are shown to significantly affect the profitability and productivity of those farm businesses. Interestingly, also, in spite of this being a, a period from 2002 to 2011, farmers' use of electronic innovations also is shown to significantly affect their farm productivity and profitability. Now, some of those technologies are embedded in some cropping innovations, such as GPS technologies, but other electronic innovations, such as use of business management software, um, isn't necessarily linked to cropping innovations. We also found that training significantly affected the farm business's human capital, and that that human capital significantly affected the farm family's ability to adopt useful innovations. And those innovations were across a raft of areas. So it wasn't just cropping. If you had high human capital, that tended to affect your ability to assess and use innovations regarding livestock management, land management, and electronic-based management. And the greater the farm business's human capital, the greater were its organisation and time management skill in some of our modelling, organisation and time management skills was a crucial determinant of farm profitability and productivity performance. In other models, that linkage wasn't quite significant, but it still positively affected farm performance. And so one implication of our findings is that the provision of farm management and business training significantly in some of our models and in others indirectly but still positively improve farm productivity and broadacre farm performance. So what are the take-home messages? If you try and unpick productivity and ask practical questions about, well, what is it that farm businesses, government, R&D providers could do to affect farm productivity and farm profitability, well, one of the clear areas that needs attention is the provision of training and access to innovation. So the work of, of people such as Rob Henry is significantly important 
in delivering farm profitability and farm performance. So these are profitable innovations that drive productivity and profitability. And the farmers, and this is not just the farmer, it's the entire farm family, their human capacity is a, a crucial ingredient in determining farm performance. So there's a role for ongoing and further investment in training and education, because that's one way of ensuring that innovations are properly assessed and either rejected or adopted. And the other area is ongoing investment in R&D is required if we're going to have the range of innovations, be it livestock, cropping, electronic, that range of innovations is necessary to underpin farm performance. That's it. Thanks, Craig. <laughs>